What is the root cause of what is going on in Iraq today? It's a complex question with no real simple answer to it. But it has its roots in the wider region. And if you look at what's been going on over the last few years, particularly in North Africa, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, and then also in the Horn of Africa, uh, Yemen, uh, Bahrain up in the Gulf, uh, and of course currently Syria, they've all been a part of the so-called Arab Spring uprising. Now, Tony Blair argues that had they not gone into Iraq back in 2003 to topple Saddam Hussein, Iraq for sure would have had its own Arab uprising. Then it differs, the two opinions, as to where ISIS derives from. Tony Blair says that it's because of a power vacuum in Syria, it's because of inaction by the West, that ISIS and other extremist groups have been allowed to grow and they've been allowed to hone their tactics and then come into Iraq. Others, though, say it's because of what happened in Iraq in 2003 and the fact that the West left it without a decent military and political structure in place that ISIS were able to develop there, go into Syria and then come back into Iraq. So who's right? The shock and awe bombing of Baghdad in 2003 was the start of the American and British invasion. After two and a half decades of rule, Iraq lost its dictatorial leader, Saddam Hussein. But the country has never found the stability that Western intervention was supposed to deliver. It has not panned out as Bush and Blair would have wished. But... Whatever had been done in 2003, you were always going to have a situation where Iraq was in a very difficult position because the whole of the region is in a difficult position today. And as I say, if we'd taken the opposite decision in 2003, Iraq would be in precisely the situation that Syria is in today. Immediately after the invasion, American forces took control of security and US diplomats were tasked with reforming Iraq's political structure. One of the first acts was to ban Saddam Hussein's Ba'ath Party. The Iraqi army was then dismantled. What you then did was put tens of thousands of men onto the streets with their weapons, with no job to do. So they were ripe to be recruited by people like al-Qaeda in Iraq, which in turn has poisonously mutated uh, into ISIS. Blair's view is that Iraq's problems are the consequence of inaction in another country, Syria, which has allowed Islamic militants, ISIS and others, to cross the border. I understand entirely why people want to say, stay out of it, it's someone else's fight, it's got nothing to do with us. But unfortunately, the people we're dealing with, they are going to pull us into this whether we like it or not. The Iraq war, more than any other conflict probably in recent history, is held up as an example of how not to do things, to the point where many want nothing to do with the country ever again. I'm afraid he's absolutely consistently wrong, wrong, wrong. And, of course, he's become a complete American neocon who thinks military action, bombing, attacking, will solve the problems. And it's actually making more and more tension, anger, division, bitterness in the Middle East. Tony Blair's legacy, whether he likes it or not, is Iraq. George Bush's too. David Cameron and Barack Obama don't want it to be theirs. Alistair Bunkle, Sky News.